When is too far too far? Have we gotten past the point of no return? Have we run out of time? Has, Has the, the clock, clock stopped? stopped? What does a nation look like where only 4% will stand for Christ? Where 25% use illegal drugs? One out of three have been drinking heavily in the past month. One out of 10 have been raped. 90% have viewed pornography online. 1,500 commit suicide every year. One million are pregnant out of wedlock. We've seen the premium on hope skyrocket beyond our pay grade. We're eyeing a generation that feels they have nothing to look forward to. Years ago, a question was presented to Jesus by the Pharisees that could hold the key for cities just like this one. They said, show us a sign. Jesus said, no sign will be given. A wicked and adulterous generation except the sign of Jonah. As Jonah became a sign to Nineveh, so shall the Son of Man become a sign to his generation. Nineveh was the largest population base on the planet. 1.5 million people. You got to understand something about Nineveh. Nineveh was brutal. They were barbaric. They were beastly. They would maim people. They would fillet them, skin them alive. They would cut open pregnant women. In fact, they were so feared that the male population of other nations when threatened by Nineveh would commit suicide rather than be at the mercy of the Ninevite army. Could God forgive a city that was that wicked? If God could show mercy to Nineveh, he would set a standard that would stand as an eternal testimony that no city is too far gone. Nineveh was vicious. They were violent but they were also vulnerable. God chose a prophet by the name of Jonah. God could have chose Amos. He could have chose Hosea, but I believe they would have went directly to Nineveh. Nineveh would have killed them. God would have had to judge Nineveh. Jonah's name means dove. God did not send a bird of judgment. He sent a bird of peace. Jonah doesn't like the idea. He goes the wrong direction. Jonah goes towards Joppa. He thinks he's going to take a fishing trip, but going the wrong direction is in fact what caused him to become a sign. Jonah's on a boat. He's running from his destiny. He's in the midst of a storm. Jonah recognizes he's got to be thrown overboard. The Bible says that the Lord prepared a fish. Jonah's thrown overboard. The fish swallows Jonah. And all of a sudden, this fish begins to make a beeline directly towards Nineveh. Nineveh, as I said, was violent. They were vicious, but they had one vulnerability. Here it is. Nineveh believed their city was founded by a fish god. That's right, a fish. Nineveh, even its name, means fish town. The highest deity that they worshipped was a fish. So what does God do? He pulls his messenger out of the mouth of what they worshipped. So when Jonah comes up on the beach in Nineveh, he had an immediate audience. One stranger makes one statement, and in one second, 1.5 million people's hearts are turned to God. Jonah had become a sign because God knew what it took to see the most wicked city on the planet turn to God. It's proof of something. People think that this city behind me, my city, San Francisco, is too wicked. People will tell you Detroit, where you're at, is too wicked. Right now, I just want you to know that no city is too far gone. Detroit is not too far gone. New York City is not too far gone. LA is not too far gone. Your city can be turned. I believe the revival of all revivals is going to come in your day. That God is rolling up his redemptive sleeves. That he's not giving up on the cities of this nation or any nation of the world. Let me tell you why you're here. You're not just here for the next thrill, the next pleasure. No more than Jonah was just there to catch another fish. I believe that right now you're being made into a sign. You may have gone the wrong direction. But I believe something inside of you is kicking towards your destiny. That's why you're here. You're here to see cities turn. I want you to pray with me right now. God, I just pray right now for those that are there in Detroit. I pray, God, that you would cause them to see 
God the epic exploit you're calling them to. I'm praying for an emerging breed of revivalists to come forward. I'm praying for the fire of God's mercy and compassion to burn in hearts. We pray, oh God, that Lord, that you would send a redemptive wave, that God, you would send a tsunami of blessing and you would begin to turn hearts and you would raise up young people to be mighty revivalists, that they would speak a word carrying the heart of mercy and that God, that they would represent you. And Lord, we pray that God, you would allow us to walk in your power that God, we could see Detroit turn to Jesus, San Francisco turn to Jesus, cities all across this nation turn to Christ. As you continue to pray, I'm agreeing with you for your city, and I ask that you would agree with me for mine.